Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're talking shirts with Emma Willis, MBE. So in today's video we're talking shirts with Emma Willis, MBE. Now Emma is uh, situated on German Street. She is a bespoke shirt designer, manufacturer and uh, she not only has the shop on German Street, she also has a factory where she works from in the old part of Gloucester and that's situated in an 18th century townhouse so it's more of a family situation than a workshop or factory environment and that is called uh, Bearland House so she doesn't just make shirts, she also makes uh, nightwear as well and also socks and underwear. However, today we're specifically talking to her about shirts and getting her ideas about the construction of shirts, uh, the purpose of the shirts and also given some hints and tips, not only about bespoke shirts, but also about buying shirts off the shelf. I will straight away apologise up front for the video audio quality. Uh, it wasn't until I got home from the interview in London that I found that there was a little bit of the video that had lost signal between the microphones and the camera. So I had to make some adjustments just so that we could get the audio to a level where we'd be able to use it on the video. So I apologise up front for the sound quality, but I think you'll still find it a very interesting video to watch. Now, Emma has been in the business quite a few years now and been very successful. She has clients all around the world that actually do not only uh, purchase from her, but they also attend the London store for the bespoke service that she provides in shirts. She also does a ready to wear collection of shirts as well. So she can talk from both ends of the spectrum about shirts and the things to look for or what to consider when you're buying either an off the shelf shirt or a bespoke shirt made specifically to your body me measurements. So I hope you enjoyed the video. So here we are and uh, I've got the lovely Emma Willis MBE and we're going to conduct an interview for you on this channel. So Emma, thank you for inviting us or allowing us to uh, do the video. Would you like to uh, just give us a little bit of a flavour about or how you got to be here in the first place. Yeah, well, thank you very much for inviting me, Chris. Um, so I began the shop in German Street in 2000. It was a stroke of luck because I had had my business for about 10 years and I then decided that I needed to have a shop. My children were young. I had been sort of flying all over the place to go and see my customers. So I decided to come up to London and just see if by any chance there was a shop in London and in German Street, which is, is a sort of pilgrimage place for bespoke shirts. And I'd always done bespoke shirts. That had been my speciality. And I came up to London and came to German Street and this beautiful shop was there to let and perfect size, perfect end of German Street, um, the lovely just the foot and actually the first shirt shop that you would come to. So I just had to, had to go for it. Yeah, that's lovely. So when we talk about buying a shirt, obviously there are different levels in shirts. So for example, we could go to Marks and Spencers or some other uh, outlet and we could buy this uh, off the shelf. Yeah. And there's a difference between that and bespoke, which you specialize in. Yeah. Um, could you just give us a, an overview of the, maybe there's diff, subtle differences between the two? Because obviously most people would understand that a bespoke is tailored specific to the person but there's a lot more that goes behind that isn't there there is um I mean, people 
Our shirts are made in exactly the same way, whether they're ready to wear or bespoke. It's the same team of extremely talented cutters and seamstresses. So if somebody puts in well into one of our ready wear ready to wear shirts, um, I wouldn't you know push them into bespoke. But um, some people have to ideally they have they have to have bespoke perhaps their shoulder shape. Um, that very much dictates. Mm. Sometimes it's 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 you you need bespoke to shape shoulders mm. to make shirts lie really nice and flat. Mm. Um, and so and some people just really want the bespoke experience, even if perhaps they could even wear a ready to wear shirt. Um, because you are you know that shirt is being made specifically for you. Um, I will take about 20 measurements. So even down mm. to your wrist size, the cuffs will be made with the allowance for your, your wrist size. And perhaps if you wear a watch, you know, depending on your watch mm. size. Um, I will take photographs of, so we get up to get your shoulder shape right, your mm. posture, which all goes into the shape of the shirt. Then of course you can choose whichever fabrics you like. Mm. And I'll discuss with the customer whether they feel the heat. Some people, you know, really feel the heat. Some people actually feel quite cool, cold. Mm. They like warming fabrics. Um, so, and then it's lifestyle. So, mm. you know, I'll always discuss, you know, are you going to wear these very formally, um, looking um, immaculate as you look, Chris? You. Are you going to wear this more smart casually with mm. the collar open? Um, and that will also dictate the sort of fabrics that we buy, we choose, and also the styles, like mm. a raised front, a flat front, a button cuff, a double cuff, yeah. shape of the collar, etc. Yeah. So the collar is one of those key features in most shirts, a different styles of collar mm. and uh, there was at one stage uh, quite prolifically the use of spread collars yeah and I remember my grandfather telling me that spread collars were designed originally for bow ties they were yes. cut away for bow ties yeah but they seem to have had a renaissance as such because a lot of people now wear them with a four in hand tie yes absolutely so, yeah yeah, well, and when you because with a, when you have a bow tie, mm. you need a space, as your grandfather said, you need a, a, a space for that bow tie. Mm. So we are, we tend to do our, our evening shirts with a cutaway as well. Mm. And yes, it's just the look. I think one of the nice things about a cutaway collar is you get that very neat line as you mm. have. You don't have the collar tips see, as well. You just get mm. that line, the line of your lapel, and then the tie and that. Mm. And it's really keen. And you have to have a little bit of cutaway in order for those points to disappear under the lapel. Mm. So I, I yeah. like it. I like yeah. a, a gentle cutaway. Yeah. I must admit, when it comes to that that spread in the collar mm. that actually meets the actual jacket or just goes underneath the jacket, yeah. sometimes that's very difficult to get with an off-the-shelf uh, shirt because mm -hmm. it's different designs, different cuts, different yeah. collars. Um, Yes, you that, need to sometimes make it a little yeah, bit longer. Yeah, so sometimes, uh, and the suit, the way the suit is cut, where it actually buttons, yep. can make a lot of difference in the, in that spread as well. Absolutely. In the, the, the overall look. Yes, they work together, don't they? Yeah. That space is very important. Yeah. So when it comes to current trends, is there anything that particularly stands out about uh, the types of shirt collars and cuffs that are actually in vogue at the moment? We're doing so much linen. And I've had an absolute burst this week. I'm doing for a man who just loves linen. He's converted in. It is the most sustainable of the fabrics as well for our planet. So it mm. takes the least water, the least um, chemical process, um, and and the least energy to produce. So yeah. it's a very kind to the planet fabric. And it's obviously a little bit more casual. People are now dressing a bit mm. more smart casually, what they can if they want to. Um, and um, so that the fabric is becoming a very important part if you're not wearing a jacket yeah. um, and obviously in the summer. So I've just done, so linens, and I've just done for the first time this week, I'm doing a linen, white linen evening shirt. Right. I'm having the Marcella bib front and yeah. the Marcella collars and cuffs, but the body is going to be linen. Hmm. And it's his idea. And he said, I just love linen. Do you think I can have a linen evening shirt? Emma? Because it's obviously the most formal yeah. of all shirts is the evening yeah. shirt. And the most casual, probably, of fabrics is yeah. one of them is, is linen. So I really like that idea. Yeah. So um, when it comes to the materials, then, um, a, a lot of shirts are made with uh, cotton. Mm -hmm. And uh, Egyptian cotton is always sung the praises of when it comes to shirt making. But there are obviously different thicknesses and the weaves are different as well. Mm -hmm. uh, any sort of suggestions about if we were going to buy a normal everyday shirt, 
the type of material that we might go for in that cotton? I would go for, for something that's lovely and smooth and luxurious to wear, um, but not too fine, um, so it's not going to wear because they do will wear out a little mm. bit quicker if they're very, very fine. So I would go for an Egyptian cotton, so the raw cotton from Egypt, mm. um, Giza 45, it's the nicest quality cotton right. there, and um, which is perfect for a sort of um, a shirt you'll want to really get a lot of wear out of, mm. and two full 100, so that's... Um, the higher the yarn count, so I, I number of yarn threads that are in a per square inch, yeah. the higher the yarn count, so they go up to twofold two hundreds, twofold two fold two forties, yeah. then you are getting so fine that is it will wear quicker. So two fold one hundred is lovely. Hmm. It's and and two fold is the best quality. It's, it's twisting two very fine um, threads of the yarn together to make a stronger cotton. Yeah. So you still have the the fineness, but you have the strength. The strength. So I would go for a two-fold 100 Egyptian poplin. Okay. The other thing, um, you mentioned earlier about shoulders, mm. and uh, sometimes the, the need for a bespoke shirt because of the shoulders. Now, it's quite, a lot, a lot of people don't understand this, but sometimes uh, one shoulder doesn't necessarily mimic the other shoulder, yes. as in people are not symmetrical. Yeah. And so sometimes you might have an inch difference because somebody's broken a collarbone before or something like that. Can make and one shoulder drops more than the other, yes. potentially because of the person's posture. Yeah. And that all comes into that. But um, when it comes to the yoke of the shirt, now there are different versions of the shirt, uh, the yoke, where we've got no yoke at all. Mm -hmm. Then we've got uh, a full yoke across the back and then a split yoke. Yeah. And... Um, It'd be interesting, to, could, could you just explain that in a little bit more detail for us, please? Yes. Well, like everything about a man's shirt, which is why I love it, is it's, it's been born out of practicality, mm. what feels more comfortable um, and gives the most movement in, in a fairly um, um, you know, rigid structure, really. You mm. have in, in cotton, for instance, in a poplin, you don't have the same movement as you do in, in woven fabrics like mm. you know, tweeds and fine wools and things in, in, the, in the tailoring fabric. So the split yoke, which you cut, we cut on the cross, because if you cut the cotton on the cross, on the bias, you get stretch, even if it, it can stretch. You can try it with a piece of cotton, you can stretch mm. it diagonally, but you can't stretch it that way or that yeah. way. So if you put a split yoke and you cut both of them on the cross, you get natural movement in the mm. back yoke, which is very important part of a shirt. And whenever a, a a man tries on his bespoke shirt or a woman, the first thing they do is this to see if they can move their, their arms comfortably. Um, so that, I mean, aesthetically, I like it on a formal shirt. It's a little bit more work, but yeah. you know, you're getting your money's worth. Yeah. Um, and then we match, the, so the patterns will be perfectly matched yeah. at, the, at the back yoke. Yeah. Um, sometimes we do do it on the, not on the cross. Sometimes that, for, for various reasons, we might do that but often if it, if it is just a pattern match, impossible. Um, so no, no yoke at all, going to the other extreme. I would only do that actually on, I do that on our women's shirts, mm. but on the men's shirts I don't, I don't do it, yeah. unless a man spe would specify that and they, mm. want, if they just want it so simple, mm. and some, you know, just to totally simplify it. Mm. Um, and then a one piece back yoke. Mm. Um, some people again, they just like the look. They don't want the they don't want the seam down the middle. They just yeah. want to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So my preference would be a, a, back, a back yoke with a split back yeah. yoke for movement, and that, and I like it. And we can show off our pattern matching. So when we talk about no yoke, mm -hmm. I mean it's the most simplest, but surely that must be the most difficult to actually get right. For cutting, um, I think. It's, I think, I mean, the shoulders are the hardest part on the, on the shirt, really, you know, to get the shoulders right. If somebody has complicated shapes, or say very drop shoulders, or very straight shoulders can be as problematic as yeah. to, to wear a pattern as very as drop shoulders. If you have quite a lot of drop to your shoulders, you can get this line from here down to, to here. Mm. And, you, and it's this fold of fabric because your shoulder is dragging down the armhole. If you have, so we, we cut it accordingly until it's lying flat as, flat as anything. Um, if you have very straight shoulders, you get it to be like pulling the shirt up and across, yeah. and you get a fold underneath at the back of the neck. 
Um, so that's something that we scoop out the neck of it. So whichever way, it's, it's, it, the shoulders can be complicated. I think it's just as, probably is just as complicated with the split back yoke to make, but it does give you a bit more structure to work with. Thank you very much. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Lovely to be invited. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, then please feel free to do so. We have a Buy Me A Coffee page, so if you'd like to make a contribution to the channel, then please feel free to do so. We also love constructive comments, so if you'd like to make some, jot them down below. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. And if you've got a question you'd like to pose to us, or you'd like an answer to, then why not jot it down? We'll try and answer your question for you. We also like ideas for future videos, so if you want to make a contribution and make a, a suggestion about future content, then please, again, jot it in the notes below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. The next video could be something that you've recommended or suggested. So until next time, take care.